All right, so I got it flipped around, and uh, the first thing I'm noticing is what we need to do is adjust the build plate here, or the rollers underneath, because it is completely loose. But before we do that, let's go ahead and take off this build surface, which is a glass. So there's a couple knobs here that release it. Should come right up, I think. Okay, there we go. So yeah, it's literally a piece of glass with a perforated style coating that basically sticks when it warms up and then as it cools off, makes the prints pop right off. So yeah, usually these work really good. And the best part about it, because it's glass, it's pretty flat. And you guys can see we got a pretty large aluminum plate here. And yeah, so what we need to do is we need to adjust our rollers under here. We're gonna need our tool, the open-ended wrench. Hopefully I can show you guys here. It might be a little hard to see, but yeah, you could probably see there's one, two, three rollers and there's three on the other side. So this shouldn't be too hard. We got all adjustable on this side and two stationary and one adjustable in the middle on the other side. So let's go ahead and start with this side that's adjustable bring you down so I don't have to raise this thing up all right hopefully you guys can see that a lot better so yeah we're just gonna spin this first one here till we get some tension so we're just gonna get close and go to the next one because we're not sure how much you know the rest of them need to move so they're all very loose small amount of play so now we're just gonna finesse it starting here with the back and basically what you want is you want the wheel to barely squeeze into the channel because you don't want it to squeeze too hard. If you're gonna have too much pressure against the channel, it's gonna eat up the wheel real quick because the you know the wheel's plastic. So but yeah, that feels pretty good for that one. Let's move on to the next one. Now remember that a little looser is better than too tight. So as long as you have no play on the bed, that's all that really matters. But looser is always better than tighter for these rollers. So yeah, once you get all that adjusted, move it back and forth, make sure everything is smooth. So if everything looks good, then we're done with this. All right, so for the next part, let's grab our manual. We do get some pretty cool Creality stickers. And this is what our manual looks like. So yeah, as usual, very nicely laid out. It tells us here all the parts of the printer, all the included contents, and our assembly instructions. So yeah, it looks like here for the first part, we're going to be connecting the upper frame, which is the gantry, to the base with four of the bolts. And the bolts that we're looking for are in this bag, the dark ones. The gantry is literally going to sit right here and then the bolts are going to go underneath. So let's go ahead and grab it and set it over. Just like that. Now the best way to do this is probably get the side of the printer here off the edge of the table so we can get underneath. And now we can grab our bolt and go from the bottom. So this makes it a lot easier. I'll go ahead and grab my wrench. I can run him down a little quicker. So I'm not going to tighten it yet. I'm just going to snug it barely because we need to go ahead and do the other side. And also, it'd probably be a good idea if we look up here, guys, with this belt here that connects the two Z axes. If we can just turn it, you can see the whole gantry can come down or the X axis here. And the reason we want to bring it down is because we want the distance here on the bottom between the two rails to be, you know, as close as possible down there before we tighten everything because this is where most of our printing is done we want it to be the most accurate down here so, so here we're gonna lower it down as close as we can down here or all the way down whatever and we'll put the bolts in here so yeah this printer is actually not very difficult to put together this is our main piece here and just connecting the gantry and then the rest is uh, more of the smaller things which shouldn't be very difficult at all so if you are new to 3D printing and are somewhat intimidated by installation, this one should not be very hard at all. All right, so we can go ahead and tighten this side up really good. So don't go crazy because we do have those braces, but you know, pretty snug. And I'll go ahead and snug up this side. All right, so for the next part, we're gonna be installing the pull rods, they call them, which are the braces. And it's quite simple where they go. So here we are looking at one of the sides on the back and you guys can see there's a thread right there at the end. So this is where it's gonna go on one side and then the other to the top. And this is what the rods look like. So they are adjustable. And this is our hardware. We get some longer bolts and shorter ones. The shorter one goes to the top and the longer ones with the washer go on the bottom here. So yeah, it doesn't look like it matters which side is up. They look to be the same. So if you need to, you can unscrew some thread here. Okay, so I think I'm doing this wrong just by looking at it here. I think the washer needs to go on the other side here. So we need to put the bolt through and then put the washer on the other end. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. 
There we go. So the washer is kind of helping it, you know, not fall through the hole here on the, the crack. That definitely looks more correct. So yeah, I mean, we're pretty good here. Now, before we go ahead and, you know, tighten it here or anything too much, we need to uh, kind of see if we need to, you know, screw it in a bit or screw it out. But yeah, we just have to work with both ends. So this side looks pretty good. Let's go to the other side. We're just gonna grab the shorter bolt and it's gonna go on the outside like this. So the way you wanna do this is you wanna line this up, you know, as close as possible to that without trying to force it either one way or the other, like pushing or pulling. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, you know, adjust this part here until we line up perfectly with the thread there. So if you have to, unscrew it also the whole thing from the bottom to go up or down. So depending, you know, how much thread you got on each side. So yeah, it looks like we need a little more here. All right, so that looks perfect. So what you want is this thing to be exactly where it wants to be, and then just connect the brace so to solidify that position. So that looks good right there. I'm gonna tighten it up just a little bit here. All right. And we can grab our wrench here and use it to lock the locking nut down so it doesn't unscrew. And same thing down here. Tighten up this bolt all the way and then lock the nut in and that's it. We are very, very solid here on this brace. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side exactly the same way. All right, so this is what it should look like looking here from the back. So yeah, and the printer now is extremely sturdy. So yeah, these things really do help with keeping the top from moving around. All right, so for the next part, it looks like we need to put on the spool holder and it goes or right about here. So the spool holder comprises of these two pieces. So the hinge, I believe, goes like this. So basically like this, and then it folds over to tuck away. And so our spool holder part needs to go on this way. It just twists right on. Pretty simple, and I really love this rolling part of it. Yeah, so we do have two T-nuts here that will go into the channel here on the side that will hold it. So yeah, we're just gonna loosen the bolts where the T-nuts can move around. And then we're gonna line up the T-nuts into the channel. Might be a little tricky, but if you put them flat, they should go right in. And just like that. So it looks like we need to be on the edge of this channel here with the front edge here of this bracket. So right about here. So yeah, with the T-nuts, we're just gonna unscrew the bolt and then screw it back in and it should lock it in. Actually quite hard to do with this angle. So yeah, very uncomfortable to try to turn those little bolts with barely any room. So yeah, a little bit inconvenient. Seems like could have been maybe a better way, but. All right, so it looks like I pretty much got it now. A little bit of fiddling around, but not too bad. In any case, that seems like about where it goes. So yeah, so you know, our spool's gonna go on here and then it's gonna feed into the filament detector here. So as long as it's pretty close, should be good. And unfortunately we can't fold over but it does go to the side a bit since it hits this brace here, so no big deal. All right, so for the next part, we're connecting our touch screen. So yeah, this is the touch screen display here, and it looks like all we gotta do is plug in a plug, which is taped here. So that shouldn't be too hard. It's kind of in an awkward place, but not too hard to plug though. So yeah, just like that, and I think it just slides right over these little bolts here. Just kind of interesting way of doing it. So yeah, it literally just lines up on there and then push it down to lock it in. Very interesting. So not the sturdiest. Yeah, just keep in mind, it's easy to kind of bump it. If I just touch it from the bottom, you can see it's already trying to go up. Yeah, I guess as long as, you know, you don't bump it too much, should be fine. But yeah, this thing looks really nice here up front. All right, guys, and that looks like everything for the assembly part. So I was just talking about plugging everything in here and the power cord, and then we got bed leveling instructions. So yeah, as you can see, not too complicated. Now the next part, a little intimidating, but it's really not because everything plugs in quite simply. So let's just go to the side here first. Well, I guess let's start over here underneath. And maybe you guys can see there, we have the optical sensor. So there's a little wire that comes out. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up a bit. So yeah, some of the wires are taped here on the side. So we got the motor wire, which is that white one. That's gonna go to the side here on the back to the motor. But the darker one here goes to the Z-axis sensor. Let's go ahead and plug that in. Maybe tuck it in where it doesn't get in the way of anything. Maybe we can use this tape that was included and just to hold it here on the side. That way it definitely doesn't go anywhere. We don't want it to go. So the motors actually plug in from the inside, flip it around enough, but let's go ahead and go to the side here, which is where our main wire that comes out from the base here plugs into this junction box. And this is obviously quite simple. Just gonna plug it in and they should match up just like that. 
and here you guys can probably see the motor plugs a little easier so there's one here and then one over there it's going to plug into the motor and this other one is taped plug into the other side and actually maybe we can go ahead and use this tape to keep it down also all right so yeah i think that is everything to plug in so there's not much to plug in so not very difficult at all to figure out what plugs in where and we can go ahead and put our build plate back on so whoops i was about to put it upside down but yeah it simply just slides into these little clips in the back but before we do that let's go ahead and peel off the protective layer So yeah, you don't want to touch the build surface here with your hands for sure, especially after building the printer. It's probably got some grease on it. But yeah, it just sits in like that and then these little locking clips lock in the bed and simple as that, it is on. So yeah, that was a pretty easy assembly, I would say. Quite easy to put together. Now looking at it, I totally forgot that we never looked at the rollers here on the gantry. So they actually feel pretty good. And this one is a little tight on this side and on the yeah and the hot end is completely loose so let's go ahead and adjust that real quick and the way these rollers adjust is there's an eccentric nut on the inside here and so this one actually feels good this one is too tight so i'm just going to loosen this side a little bit see what happens all right that feels a lot better better tension so yeah the best way to gauge is, is you got to be able to spin the rollers stationary if they're too tight and you can't spin them you got to loosen them up just a bit but yeah on the gantry here going up and down it's okay to be a little tighter because they don't move up up and down you know a lot compared to let's say the y-axis constantly going back and forth and the x here so yeah all right so i'm happy with that let's go to the hot end it's completely loose so the eccentric nut is on the bottom so we're going to tighten it up a bit here okay that's too tight back off just a bit there we go and that feels perfect so you want there to be friction and you can still spin the roller that's the main thing if you can't spin the roller that means you're way too tight now we're going to check it all right and that feels really smooth there we go so that's how you adjust rollers not too hard but you know if you're confused take your time until you get it right because this is quite important to get good print quality and you know long life out of these parts here